Greetings and salutations to those here for online worship. My name is Reverend Beth Hoskins. On behalf of Inman Presbyterian Church, as well as Landrum Presbyterian Church, I welcome you. Uh, just if you want to support the ministry of either churches, you can mail a check to one of these two addresses. We would put your money to good use. Glad that you're here today. For church members who might be watching, just a couple of minutes for announcements. Uh, Landrum, the choir is on break till for the summer. We give them a couple of months off because they do such a good job. Uh, so no, no choir, no choir for a while. Um, also, we're still collecting things for Operation Hope always, and this year especially condiments to make uh, because the SNAP program ran out. And, they, and that's our list. Every church got something. So ours is condiments. All right. Inman. We have an elder training uh, being led by Tom Malone. It's for the whole presbytery. Anyone that wants to come, I think they're mainly elders from smaller churches on this side of the presbytery. Foothills, that would be the Spartanburg region, north and south. Uh, and that's Saturday from 9 to 1230. Let's see. Prayer concerns. I put this up so you can take a snapshot and pray for these people during the week. I don't know of any changes. Um, I do want the Inman folks to pray, especially for Heather. Her test did come back and she does have breast cancer. And they are plotting her treatment and figuring out how extensive it is. So please pray for Heather and Cherie. That's a live situation. All right, let us put aside the worries of the world and take a deep breath. I'm so glad you're here today. Welcome. Let us begin our time together with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and creative God, send your spirit into this space in which we dwell and fill us with your breath of life. Bring to our awareness your presence all around us and in us. Bring forth those parts of us that are good and lovely and kind and full of faithful graciousness. And bless our worship that we may in turn glorify you when we return to the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. Let us continue to gather together by singing. And the song we are singing today is Breathe On Me, Breath of God. Let us now turn our attention to God's word as it comes to us from the Old Testament, from Psalm 104, verses 24 to 31. Listen for the word of the Lord. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. 
there go the ships. And Leviathan, that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open their hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. And when you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now turning to the New Testament, to the text for the day. This is Pentecost Sunday. I probably should be wearing red. I should have thought of that. But anyway, Pentecost Sunday and the story of Pentecost comes to us from the book of Acts, from the second chapter. And I'm reading to you verses 1 to 18 today. When the day of Pentecost had come, they, being the disciples who followed Jesus, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, "Uh, uh, uh, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. Then the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow, that's quite a story, isn't it? That story of Pentecost. Wow, that's one of the great stories of our faith. In the Pentecost in the Old Testament was actually an annual harvest festival that happened every year, seven weeks or 50 days after Passover. That's where the word Pentecost comes from. It means literally 50th. So the 50th day after Pentecost, people were supposed to come to Jerusalem with all these special offerings in celebration of the harvest that the Lord had given them that year. Uh, and they would include uh, two loaves of bread from their finest flour, among other things. But of course, Christians celebrate it as the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all believers who had gathered together there just as Jesus had instructed them to do. So Pentecost in our tradition has its very own day here 50 days after Easter. And it's such a doozy of a story. I, I have always thought it would be fun to have a contest, a competition. If I had a lot of money, I would sponsor a contest and invite all directors all over the world, especially in Hollywood, to produce their best rendition of the Pentecost event. Can you imagine what they might come up with, that the, the, from heaven the sound like a hurricane, filling the house where the people are praying, and fire appearing like lightning, dividing into tongues that rested on every single person in the room. Can you imagine what Steven Spielberg would do with that? Or George Lucas of Star Wars fame? Man, and how would they play all the people in the room, all the believers, and what would their expressions be, and what would their actions be as it happened? as they heard their neighbors speaking in what sounded like gibberish that they found out later was perfectly good speech of another light, of another nation, right? And, and when they opened their, their own mouths to speak, how, how confused they would have been that the sounds that came out of them were, was another language they had never studied before. <sighs> like going to Duolingo and knowing all the answers before you've ever been to that country or even tried to speak the language. Would the people be so stunned that they simply sat in their seats with their mouths open, talking? Or would some of them have, have, have dived under the tables out of fear? Or would they be running around like Keystone cops, you know, in total confusion and shock? Man, I would like to see what a Hollywood producer would do with that, would you? And uh, I have heard of ministers trying to create the big moment in worship and it's usually to great comical effect, honestly. I know I, I tried to do it once. I'll admit it. I'll come clean. Uh, <laughs> in a small church with humble resources, I, I got a fan and I tied some red, orange, and yellow crepe paper streamers to it and had someone turn on the fan during the scripture reading. And, and it blew, you know, and the streamers kind of wiggled in the wind and during the sermon, I, I glanced over there and realized how puny and silly it looked compared to a hurricane-sounding thunderstorm of fire erupting in the room. And I smiled and sighed and, and thought to myself, let's not ever try to do that again, shall we? Oh, man. But the funniest story I ever heard about someone trying to, you know, pepper up the Pentecost service came from a a friend of mine, we went through seminary together, and a few years later, we were gathered at, on the seminary campus, and he told me this, told us this story of, uh, you know, when you go to your first church straight out of seminary, you're filled with this fire, you know, you're filled with this enthusiasm, and you want to give it your all, and so he went to about a 200-member church, as I remember it, and it was an older, older church, beautiful building with the high ceilings, and uh, they had air conditioning, but they also had in the sanctuary these ancient fans that had been used back in the day before air conditioning, and they were used to stir the air, and they made people more comfortable. And so while he was working on his Pentecost service, he thought of those fans in the sanctuary hanging from the ceiling and decided that their time had come to be part of the service once more. 
Oh, he thought this is perfect to have a blast of mighty wind to remind us of, of, of that holy day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the people. Oh, he was so excited about it. Now he did, he was smart enough to ask the property chair, the elder in charge of property, if the fan still worked. Uh, yes, he said, why? He says, oh, don't bother about that. I just wanted to know. And he got the help of somebody else who was going to flip the switch. And sure enough, he read the scripture and gave the nod and they flipped the switch and on came the ancient fans springing to life. And when they did, all the dust and debris that had gathered on every single fan blade from decades of misuse spewed into the air in a giant cloud of dust and debris and dirt and dead insects fell on the faithful who were huddled in fear beneath this great cloud, covering their faces as best they could, trying to cover up their coughs and snorts for the rest of the service, you know. <laughs> oh, no. Some things are best left to the imagination, my friends. Uh, so let us just simply imagine praying with those other people in those rooms, waiting, wondering what's going to happen. The Lord told us to wait here and pray. We know something's happening. Something's going to happen. And praying and waiting and looking to heaven with great expectation of what was to come. And can we imagine a sound that filling the room a sound like a wind blowing and yet nothing is knocked over and nothing is destroyed. And then the flash of fire. I, I think I'd blink my eyes. And then the, the fire filling the room, dividing into tongues and seeing that tongue touch all your neighbors and then the tongue comes for you and touches you too. And everybody talking at once, all at once in all the languages of the earth. Holy wind of fire and God. Holy, amazing God poured out upon us. Ah, oh, can we only imagine being in that room? And of course, I, I guess I need to say it was a truly historic event like uh, D Day or uh, Apollo landing on the moon. You know, it's not really, I don't think it's meant to be recreated. It'd be nearly impossible for us to do that in our world and time. Our world is so different from their world, and we are different from them. To, to capture all the nuances of that time and, and the people who grew up in that world as it was, I, I don't think we can, we shouldn't even try to do that, really. But we can learn from it. We can be inspired by it and celebrate it so that all of its riches comes to our remembrance and we give thanks to God for it. Kind of like Memorial Day. You know, Memorial Day is tomorrow, and we take time to, to remember those who gave their lives to establish and protect our freedoms. And we remember and we give thanks to God for them. And so Pentecost was the, the day God gave to all believers, including us, the Holy Spirit. That is the Spirit of the risen Lord Himself. The Holy Spirit makes them real. The, that holy, great wind and fire of God was given to us so that the church of Jesus Christ would be born. A lot of people have a birthday cake and sing happy birthday to the church on Pentecost. That kind of thing. Because the church of Jesus Christ was born and equipped with everything it needed to not only survive, but to thrive. The same spirit that was poured out upon those first believers is available to us right now. Now, our needs are different. Because the world we live in is so different than ours. Oh, man, they didn't have computers. They, they didn't have the Internet. They didn't have cars even. They, we had a whole lot of stuff. They didn't have, and we have a whole lot more troubles we have to deal with than they did. Our world is different than theirs. They needed 
big fans far up in the recesses of the sanctuary steel ceiling. We need a thermostat on the wall to make the building hot or cold as we have need. Not because we need to be comfortable, but because we need to be focused on the Word of God. And you can't do that if you're too cold or you're too hot. And so we put that thermostat in and we play that money to be able to get our building hot or cold so we can use it all year round. They needed to speak in the language of Parthenians, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, not to mention Egyptians and people in Pontus and Asia, and all the other words that I spent a long time learning how to say. I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> uh, they needed to speak those languages. We never even heard of some of those places. We may need to learn to speak HTML or JavaScript to do websites or hip-hop, or country twang, depending on where you live. Or the, most, the almost indecipherable language of teenagers that changes every generation. Or whatever language your neighbor speaks. Or that person who scans your groceries for you down at Food Line or wherever your grocery store is. Or at the Russian bakery in Enman. Yes, we got a lot of Russians and Ukrainians around Enman. And there's a Russian bakery. I would highly recommend it, by the way. Wow, spectacular. I bet you got an ethnic store like that around you. The Holy Spirit is here to give us what we need to proclaim the gospel in this time and place in this culture and community, whatever culture or community you are in, my friends, maybe you're in a senior living place. That's got its own language and rituals. That Holy Spirit, it gave a poorly educated fisherman the courage and wherewithal to stand up and preach the gospel to people who'd never met before. Peter's the one stood up. Hey, 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 listen to me. Listen to me, you people of Judea. Listen, listen, listen. And explain to them exactly what was happening and that it was not a drunken party at 9 o'clock in the morning, for Pete's sakes. No, no, no. He tells them it's the prophecy of Joel being fulfilled by God. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy, said Brother Peter. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, said the illiterate fisherman from Galilee named Peter. Mm. So today, let us remember those who have gone before us who've laid their lives on the altar of freedom for, for our behalf on this Memorial Day weekend. And let us thank God for them. And let them inspire us to live up to their example. And on this Pentecost Sunday, let us remember the living God who sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us that we might live joyfully and abundantly forever. And let us remember that this God revealed in Jesus Christ poured out His Spirit upon His people on the day of Pentecost so that we would have everything we need in our day and time to proclaim God's word of grace and salvation near at hand and far away Yea, even to the ends of the earth. Let us remember and give thanks. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I share with you now a Pentecost prayer that was written by another colleague of mine that went to seminary with me at Columbia Seminary. His name is Todd Jenkins. Let us pray. Remind us, O oh God, that every day is Pentecost, that we don't have to find a violent wind and flaming torches to identify your arrival, 
that all we need to do is to be attuned to a wispy whisper from the story of people who haven't been heard and a spark of hope in the eyes of those whose words have been deemed gibberish. Remind us that the inbreaking of your spirit is not a rare occurrence, but a moment-to-moment possibility for all who are open to the arrival of a neighbor's story. Remind us that love is the universal language understood by all, and that we are called to sing its song in every place where the absence of dignity and respect have left a gaping womb. Pentecost us again, O God, this day and every day. And Lord, remember our brothers and sisters who have your need, who have need of you this day and your spirit of love and grace, who long to have their bodies healed, whose hearts are heavy with grief, who need to be encouraged or strengthened or be given the wisdom they need for some great decision. Bless your people on their way to bear the light that is your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may share it with each other in honor and glory of his name. Hear us now as we pray as he has taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in a hymn of parting together. O beautiful for spacious guys. Oh, oh, oh.
May the risen Lord bless you on this Pentecost Sunday with a strong sense of God's love for you and all the gifts you need to share that love with others in the world around you. And may God also instill in you a thankfulness for all the people who have given of themselves, even their lives, that we might be free. May we remember and give thanks to God. In the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Go in peace. Amen.